The National Desk, America's News, now. America in the dark, the 2024 eclipse extravaganza now in the history books. Who got to see it besides just humans? And how many years you'll have to wait to see it again? Then a major announcement comes from a collegiate governing body concerning biological men playing in women's sports. We're breaking down what you need to know. And a strain of avian influenza that has killed millions of birds has been detected in dairy cows. The risk to humans and what we know about how it's impacting prices at the store. This is the National Desk America's News Now. I'm Amira David. The astronomical event that had millions of Americans on the edge of their seat, the total solar eclipse that won't happen in the United States for another 20 years, graced the skies above parts of 15 states that were really in the path of totality. The eclipse first appearing along Mexico's Pacific coast and then traveling across a broad swath of the United States from Texas to Maine. At least 30 million people had the chance to see it in full view. And that includes scores of people across Ohio. Our national desk team was in Marion, Ohio, talking to the crowds. Here's the moment, the moon crossing over the sun, making Marion County completely dark. <laughs> Cheers erupt across the area, a sight people thankful they traveled to see. We were taking a trip and it happened to work out that we had a day free and we decided we would stop by here on our way to Florida from North Carolina. Not really on the way. Not quite. From North Carolina, in route to Florida, but a pit stop here in Ohio to see the total solar eclipse. This is just something that doesn't happen every day, and it is a true astronomical thing that you can look at and really wonder about the world. While many families experience the eclipse for the first time. We're science nerds, what can we say? <laughs> <laughs> many others traveled hours so they could take in the phenomenon for the second time or sixth time. Once you've seen one, you don't want to miss another one. And of course, it wasn't just humans catching all the eclipse glory. You're looking at video of the Dallas Zoo. Even the animals were caught in the moment of daytime darkness. Pretty cool. In a unanimous decision, the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics has banned biological males from competing in women's sports. The NAIA is not a part of the larger NCAA and governs 249 smaller colleges across the country. The 20 to 0 vote does not apply to practices, scrimmages, or exhibition games and says that biological males can still compete with other men's teams. In a separate but similar condemnation, the Vatican declares sex change surgeries and surrogacy as threats to human dignity. In a 20-page declaration called Infinite Dignity, the Vatican repeatedly rejects gender theory, saying one must not defy God's plan of human life. The Vatican document also says surrogacy goes against both the birth mother and the child. The condemnation puts both practices in the same boat as abortion and euthanasia. The de declaration was approved by Pope Francis last month. And take a look at this new video of a Boeing 737-800 engine cowling falling off of yesterday's Southwest Airlines flight just out of Denver. The plane did take off but was forced to return to the airport, thankfully with no injuries to report. Boeing remains under intense scrutiny following multiple well-documented plane mishaps from a door flying off in January to a wing coming apart in February and a tire falling off in March, just to name a few. Spirit Airlines has delayed new purchases and back orders from Airbus for new aircraft to be delivered between mid-2025 through the end of 2026. That airline also furloughing 260 pilots beginning in September of this year, all to create about $340 million of liquidity to stay in business following the fallout of a merger with JetBlue that was rejected by the Justice Department. Former President Donald Trump is seeking a delay in his hush money criminal trial in a pair of lawsuits filed today 
Trump's team appealed to have the case moved and for the gag order placed upon him to be removed. The trial is currently set to begin on April 15th. Meanwhile, this morning, Donald Trump grabbing headlines as he laid out his abortion policy on social media. National correspondent Kayla Gaskins joins us from Washington. As we near the two-year mark of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, abortion remains far from a settled issue in American politics. The people united. On Monday, Donald Trump clarifying where he stands. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights. Publishing a video to Truth Social, praising the conservative justices for putting an end to Roe. For having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. Taking a stance on IVF treatments. I strongly support the availability of IVF for couples who are trying to have a precious baby. What could be more beautiful or better than that? As well as states versus federal rights to legislate abortion access. Took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state. Even adding in a comparison to Ronald Reagan. Like Ronald Reagan, I am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. In response, President Biden releasing a statement writing, Trump is scrambling. He's worried that since he's the one responsible for overturning Roe, the voters will hold him accountable in 2024. Well, I have news for Donald. They will. Conservatives mixed in their responses. Some, like Representative Nancy Mace, applauding the former president, Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports a national abortion ban, respectfully disagrees with Trump saying it should be up to the states. Meanwhile, Democrats still banking on the abortion issue, helping them in November. We believe that women's reproductive freedom should be protected in this country. Trump argues, though, that Democrats are the extreme ones on abortion for wanting looser restrictions. And Kayla, what does polling say about where Americans stand on the issue? So, Amira, a new Fox News poll shows a record 59 percent of Americans believe abortion should be legal in all or most cases. That's up from the 44 percent who said so just two years ago. We'll have to see how it all plays out in this election year. Kayla Gaskins reporting from Washington, D.C. Thank you. Police have named the man who fatally shot a security guard and wounded a police officer at a Florida bar over the weekend. Police say Jamal Wayne Wood is the man behind a Saturday firefight at a martini bar in Doral, about 17 miles west of Miami. Wood was killed in an exchange of fire with police. But tonight, six others, we understand, six bystanders, in fact, were hurt during the shooting and now are working to recover in area hospitals. Unclear at this point whether any of the bystanders were injured by police gunfire. Investigators are working to determine what caused the altercation. But we do know that the security guard who was killed, 23-year-old George Castellanos, he had tried to intervene in a fight just before he was shot. The city's mayor, Christy Fraga, has called for a special meeting next week to address nightclub violence. Country singer Morgan Wallen was released on a $50,000 bond today after being arrested last night on three counts of felony recklessness and one count of misdemeanor disorderly conduct. Nashville police say security footage shows Wallen throwing a chair off a six-story rooftop on Broadway Street in downtown Nashville. The chair missed two police officers who were street side at the time. No injuries were reported. President Biden was in the battleground state of Wisconsin today touting a new plan to ease student loan debt for more than 30 million borrowers. But the plan has to be finalized first, which could take months and also has to weather any possible legal challenges. It's Biden's second attempt to secure widespread loan forgiveness after the Supreme Court struck down his first plan last summer. Still, he's optimistic. Folks. I will never stop to deliver student debt relief and hardworking Americans, and it's only in the interest of America that we do it. And again, it's for the good of our economy. It's growing stronger and stronger, and it is. Under the plan, nearly 70 percent of all federal student loan borrowers would see their debt reduced or fully wiped out. They'd have to fall under certain categories, like having balances bigger than originally borrowed due to interest or entering repayment at least 20 years ago. 
But another shot at forgiveness is likely to set up another fight with Republicans, most of whom argue Biden's overstepping his authority. Coming up, the invasion date is set with a peace deal on the table. Can a ceasefire be agreed to before the rough ground operation begins? And new warnings from the CDC following a human getting the avian flu. Why this concern could be a concern at the grocery store. And then from people to animals, a solar eclipse could be a life-changing event. Stories from around the country. Six months into a brutal war between Israel and Hamas, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowing to go through a ground invasion in the southern city, Gazan city of Rafah. Now, in a video statement today, Netanyahu declared, quote, it will happen and there is a date. Netanyahu argues the operation is necessary to defeat Hamas and insists Israel has a plan to protect civilians. But the Biden administration and many other Western allies, they've warned against such an operation over concern it would put too many innocent people at risk. And that's because right now more than a million people are seeking refuge in Rafah after fleeing war hostilities in other parts of Gaza. Ahead of that planned invasion, Israel remains under pressure to allow more aid to enter the besieged enclave. Two people there are now facing, or ra rather more than a million people there are facing a hunger crisis. The key step of opening the era's land crossing, that has been delayed due to logistics. But tonight, the U.S. tracking what it's calling progress. 304 aid trucks entered Gaza, the highest number of trucks in any single day since the conflict began. That number represents a significant improvement, but it is important not just that we see the daily number continue to grow, but that it be sustained over time. Our hope is that by later this week, 350 trucks will enter Gaza each day. Miller also reiterated that the U.S. would be observing closely to ensure humanitarian workers can do their jobs as safely as possible. Meantime, in those ongoing ceasefire talks, CIA Director Bill Burns has presented a new proposal to try and bridge the gaps that would allow for a pause in fighting and for the release of hostages. CNN reports the latest proposal includes a push to release more Palestinian prisoners in exchange. Hamas is reportedly studying the proposal. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, she wrapped up her trip to Beijing today and urged China to change its aggressive trade actions. This includes the issue of China's industrial overcapacity, which the United States and other countries are concerned can cause global spillovers. 
And in an effort to reduce reliance on China and other Asian suppliers, the Biden administration also pledged up to $6.6 billion for a Taiwanese semiconductor giant to expand manufacturing into the United States in two facilities, one in Phoenix and another in a unannounced location. The funding is tied to the CHIPS Act law President Biden signed in 2022. Well, health officials are closely tracking a highly infectious strain of the avian flu. The CDC issuing a health alert after a farm worker in Texas tested positive for the virus. Officials say the threat to humans remains low, but it's causing disruptions to supply chains that will likely impact you at the grocery store. National correspondent Atral Nashar has a closer look at the cost of the outbreak. Farmers across the country are keeping a close eye on their livestock for signs of H5N1, what the CDC describes as a highly pathogenic strain of avian flu. It can devastate farmers and send shockwaves through food supply chains, pushing up prices at the grocery store. The largest producer and distributor of fresh eggs in the country temporarily stopping production after the flu was detected at its Texas facility. Calmaine Food says it has to euthanize almost 2 million hens. Several hundred thousand of them were pullets. So those are birds that can't produce eggs yet. They're almost there. Um, so now you've lost that production. Experts anticipate an immediate impact on egg prices, and it wouldn't be the first time. This is the same H5N1 virus that has been present in wild birds and commercial poultry flocks since February of 2022. Just last year, avian flu pushed the price of eggs to a peak of 482 per dozen, according to the St. Louis Fed. By August, they were down to about $2 and slowly rising back, reaching almost $3 in February. The avian flu is also starting to show up in dairy cows. Now, milk from an infected cow is still safe to drink once it's been pasteurized, but the flu does slow down a cow's milk production. So if enough cows are infected, that could drive up the price of dairy products. They stop eating and drinking to start off with, and that just slows everything down and causes them to produce about 20 to 30 percent less milk. The American Farm Bureau Federation is also closely tracking a potential impact on turkey producers, which have been hit hard by this flu in the past. They say they'll have a better idea of the scope of the damage in late May toward the end of migratory bird movement. Farmers and shoppers bracing for a potential financial hit during what's already an extremely volatile time for prices. In Washington, I'm Atrel Nishar for the National Desk, America's News Now. Atra, thank you. Now, if you're a Walmart customer, you could be entitled to be a part of a class action settlement. Certain customers may be eligible to up to $500 in compensation following a lawsuit with Walmart that claims the store overcharged purchases of some weighted goods, including poultry, pork, seafood products, and bagged citrus. Walmart denies the accusations but has agreed to a settlement. So if you shopped at a Walmart anywhere in the United States or Puerto Rico between October 19th of 2018 and January 19th of 2024, you can submit a claim by June 5th of this year. And do note, you don't need a receipt to file that claim, and you could still get between $10 and $25, depending on what you bought. If you were outside today watching the eclipse and your allergies were worse than usual, what's in the air, not the skies, was likely what was making you awfully miserable. Medical reporter Liz Bonas shares what's making this a particularly bad allergy season. Hey there, everybody, it's not your imagination. A recent study analyzed pollen counts and found we have the perfect pollen recipe this season for an allergy season starting earlier and feeling more severe. It's been worse, like, I guess, these past few weeks. I think the weather um, changing so much. Yep, blame it on the weather. A warm, wet, early spring across much of the country has many feeling what Danielle Marshall and Christy Swartzmith noticed recently. Usually some nasal drippage. My eyes, um, you know, get um, a little bit of grossness in there, a little bit of mucus. And um, it's always a gamble on which nostril will work when I wake up. Well, it sure looks beautiful this time of year. It's now estimated one in four of us are reacting to airborne irritants. The pollen and mold can irritate your immune system and make your sinuses feel inflamed. Similar to last year, uh, things are already, uh, trees are already in full bloom. And last year, I think, was the worst 
allergic season uh, I've ever seen in 30 years. Uh, lots of upper respiratory, chronic upper respiratory tract congestion, lots of rashes, uh, especially eczema. Dr. Scott Woods is a family medicine specialist at Ohio's TriHealth. He says if over-the-counter medications aren't helping you ease the misery, I get the double hit. So I, spring is horrible, summer I get a reprieve, and then the fall tends to be my worst too with mold. Ask your doctor about prescription medications to help control symptoms. And if those don't work, you may have an extreme allergy to the outside covering or the shell on plants with pollen, which means you may need immunotherapy. These sort of calm down your reaction to triggers. There are pills for grass, ragweed, and dust. But if trees are what bug you, you still may need allergy shots. Well, this is definitely a primary care issue and can usually be addressed with one or sometimes two medicines. There certainly are a few people who are very allergic and will require multiple therapies. Now, just to note that immunotherapy is a long-term treatment, more likely to help you more next season than this one, but it is important and can really make a difference if you're not finding relief. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Liz, thank you. Coming up, Eclipse Day 2024 stories from around the country as Americans prepared for a once in a lifetime event. We have reporters all across the country in your neighborhoods covering the issues that matter most to you. We're taking the pulse of America and we begin with a look at how communities all over prepared to get a view of that historic eclipse. I just, I came in here, I saw the prepare for the eclipse on the 8th, there's a sign up there and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. I saw my brother and I can't wait. She's one of thousands of people expected to travel here, all to catch a view. Eclipse chasers Lori and Robert Paz came all the way from California. Yeah, I think everyone should should experience an eclipse at least once in their life, a total eclipse. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's just an amazing astronomical event. The eclipse bringing families together, like Kate McKay's. We have family flying in from um, other parts of the country, too, to come up and, and see it. And Phyllis Browns. Her her son organized a family reunion, inviting everyone. Um, it's turned out quite a few people are joining us here for the eclipse. And of course, we don't know that we'll be able to see the sun because it's Rochester, but we'll be out on Lake Ontario, east of Rochester, and uh, it'll be fun no matter what. If you look at the sun, even just for a couple seconds, you actually may have some damage to the back of the eye that you might not know about for a little while. Local optometrist Dr. Zachary Long explains why looking at an eclipse can lead to serious health concerns. The sun coming around is actually having that UV damage. That UV damage can get centered in the very back of the eye in our central vision spot. Well, if that happens, you might lose vision forever. He also mentioned that there are some people more susceptible to UV damage. A child has a very clear lens inside the eye, and that lens is going to focus all of that damage to the very back of the eye. And unfortunately, it's a one and done. And you only have one set of eyeballs, so make sure that you take care of them. 
The main way to safely see the solar eclipse is with special glasses. You're going to notice that they're a lot darker than sunglasses, and so you can't really see out of them. And so the whole idea behind wearing these is we've got solar filters in here, and so those solar filters are going to protect the eye. We don't have concrete answers. Because while Dr. Gingrich knows just about everything there is to know about pets, no one really knows what these do to them. There's very little scientific research behind animal behavior and eclipses. Of course, we've had eclipses before, not quite to the totality we're expecting this time around in a long time. But still, that leads Dr. Gingrich to predict. I would not be overly concerned about this eclipse. But she admits, you know your animal more than the veterinarian you come to. Which means if you have a pet that in the past has environmental triggers like fireworks or storms or whatever it may be, then your animal might be a little more sensitive to the eclipse's consequences. Do your best in making them feel as comfortable as you think they would want to be. And tonight is the last dance of the NCAA tournament season, but one major coach has chosen a new partner when next season comes along. The big coaching shakeup in 90 seconds. A major shakeup in men's college basketball today where head coach John Calipari announced he is leaving Blue Blood Kentucky for an in-conference rival, Arkansas. Calipari led the Wildcats to seven Elite Eights, four Final Fours, and a national championship over 15 years, but has failed to make the second round of the tournament in the last five years. Arkansas finished the season 16 and 17 and failed to make the postseason tournaments. And Basketball Madness concludes tonight in the final of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Two of the top three teams all season square off for the big win. Number one overall Connecticut Huskies will play fellow number one seeded Purdue, tipping off at 920 Eastern time, hoping to win back-to-back -back championships while Purdue is seeking its first ever tournament title. And that does it for this edition of the National Desk. We do invite you to join us again this evening for more coverage on America's top stories. I'm Amira David. Thank you so much for watching.